All right, COVID-19 cases, they're on the rise. The CDC reports 18 million American adults had long COVID. 8.1 million say they currently have it as well. The report found nearly twice as many women currently suffer with long COVID symptoms compared to men. Here to talk more about it, Dr. Renee Matthews. Thank you for being with us this morning. So why does long COVID seem to be impacting more women than men? Do we know? We don't know yet why more women than men, um, but I will say that as prior to your prior story, women go to the doctor more. So there might be more men, they just haven't gone to the doctor and said anything about it. Which is surprising because women are known to tough it out, right? But we're also smart enough to go get something checked out. What do we know about long COVID though? I mean, we recognize that it is an issue, that millions of people are dealing with varying symptoms. What does the data show about how long it lasts and some of the symptoms that persist? Well, we don't know because the data is ongoing, but there is a fabulous clinic in New York that actually takes care of long COVID patients. And I think that in the future, we're gonna see more of those probably popping up across the country because so many people are being affected. I know one of the biggest complaints about from a lot of people is the brain fog and the fatigue that is still going on two and three years after having COVID. Yeah, and lack of smell and taste and all of those things that go along with it impacts your daily life. Uh, something mm -hmm. else that impacts our life day to day, especially if you're a parent, a respiratory illness season is coming and the most prescribed antibiotic, amoxicillin, right? I gave it to my kids in short supply as we go into winter for a second time. There are several manufacturers reporting the drug still being produced, but customers can order it on a limited amount. Uh, some cite that it's related to the demand for an increase in the drug. Others say there's no reason. I guess my question to you is one, why is it happening? And two, what are the other alternatives? Because when you have a sick kid, amoxicillin has been the go-to. So they don't, they can't quite figure out why it's going on. And apparently there's nothing that the government can mandate for the pharmaceuticals to make more. Um, so I don't know when this is gonna be resolved. And of course, like you said, flu season's coming upon us. The kids just went back to school. So, you know, a lot of kids are catching all sorts of different bugs, but um, there is clindamycin, azithromycin, um, ceftonir. But the thing is that a lot of these medications, unfortunately are stronger antibiotics and you don't necessarily wanna give a stronger antibiotic because then we're gonna run into um, resistance. And then we are, what are we gonna use when we have something, you know, that's a bigger bug? Yeah, so have that important conversation with your doctor about alternatives and better yet, wash your hands, uh, stay home when uh, you're that's sick. That's what I was going to say. Tell your kids <laughs> to wash their hands. Wash your hands. Please wash your hands. They're little um, germ I bags, our kids. Exactly. Take your clothes off when you come home and, you mm. know, all the things that you can do to prevent the bugs from coming into your house. Yeah. Easier said than done for a five-year-old, right. but hey, we'll do our work. Hey, Dr. Renee Matthews, <laughs> I'm out of time, but uh, appreciate you coming on. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for having me. All right.